Welcome to the Fortress of Comic News, episode 192. I am one of your hosts, Chris, alongside jolly old Mike. Yeah, it's uh, very jolly this week. It's a, um, it is a Star Wars podcast. <laughs> Pretty this much, week. and I'm yeah. fine with that. Yep, it is. Uh, man, you know, every week... Um, HBO keeps releasing, you know, another good thing, another good reason to get HBO Max. And then Disney's like, well, here's nine TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> here's our big swinging dick, HBO. Yeah. Enjoy. What, what the hell is happening? Um, uh, the bad news first, I guess, you know, we're not we're going to have to pay seven dollars a month for uh, for Disney Plus, which I think was another um, jab at. Uh, HBO Max, I think it's eight dollars, or maybe it'd be like fifteen or twelve or something. HBO's like fifteen. Yeah. yeah, so that was like, oh, we raised it to seven. Oh no, um, which is even cheaper than Netflix too. Like, um, and then you know, Black Widow won't be coming to theater. Well, it gets delayed to theaters next July or something. So they kind of announced that they're not going to be putting it on the streaming service. So, um, I and who would have thought? I mean, the Disney Adventures investors meeting. It was like. Nobody saw this coming, right? And then it was crazy. I've never been so interested in an investors meeting in my life. Uh, uh, and I own know, stocks, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you think people are doing sitting in the crowd like they had their Robin Hood app open? Like, buy more Disney stock. Like, <laughs> <laughs> What do you do in an investors uh, a meeting for Disney? Because like, any time they announce anything, you just make money. So obviously, like them even having a meeting where they're going to announce anything is like, well, obviously your stock's going to go up now. Like, I think you just, you just sit there and you stare and you go, fuck, I'm, my stock's about to make me a lot of money. Yeah. Stonks more, more, and more money. Um, there, I mean, you might as well just buy a printing, a money printing machine and, uh, just have at it because I mean, we got a lot to get through this episode. Um, and it seems like the whole uh, Mandalorian thing of each episode is a new spinoff is kind of correct here. Uh, Listen, there's a few like we were right moments yeah. throughout this, um, and and the uh, even like characters from the solo movie, characters from Rogue One, they're like, you get a movie slash TV show, you get a TV show. It's like they they're just you know not stopping anytime soon. Um, I mean, we'll get to it, but it, there's some crazy stuff happening. Uh, and, like, there was so much announced in such a short time period that I was, like, I was trying to keep up with it all, and I missed so many things to, like, the next day. I was, like, a movie here, a TV show trailer there. I was, like, this was insane, the amount of stuff they dropped. Like, this was more than a Comic-Con it, announcement. <laughs> like, If I'm remembering correctly, this was happening at the same time as the the video game awards. Right, yeah. Which, I don't care about the awards, whatever, but they announced cool stuff, so I was watching that, and then yeah. somebody was just like, did you hear about you know, one of the things we're going to talk about? And I was yeah. like, wait, what? And I started looking up, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? Yeah. Watching the video game awards, there's something else going on? Yeah, well, uh, you know, like, shame on me for not tuning into the investors meeting. <laughs> Oh man! All right. Well, I guess we'll just we'll just kick it off here. Uh, you know, so we know this that I mean, Ahsoka Tana is coming back live action. Rosario Dawson is coming back. She's got her own series. Good because that's what we were saying. Give her her own series. She's a strong enough character. Um, it's set in the same timeline as Mandalorian, and it's got John Favreau and Dave Filoni producing it for Disney Plus. So bam, wham, bam! You got the Mandalorian team on it. You got—I mean, we already saw our first taste of the character, and it's just going to get better from there. Yeah, we got our uh, our backdoor pilot, and it looked great. And yes, yeah, right. Yeah, give me more. Yep. Let's go. Uh, all right, we got more. I got more for you. Also <laughs> coming from Favreau and Filoni is Rangers of the New Republic. Uh, not much is known, but it takes place during the events of the Mandalorian. So I'm guessing this is the. Uh, um this the where we go to um where we find the boba fett's armor on tatooine i'm thinking maybe we meet up with that guy uh I, who was wearing the boba fett armor maybe because you know, we talked about how he's a famous actor i don't know i see i was thinking this was gonna be about the remember the the two fighter pilots that 
intercept oh, him. And I yeah. thought it was going to be like, maybe not about them, but about like what they what have the, going What on. the Republic's been like a buddy cop. <laughs> yeah. Buddy I'm, cop not, I'm not quite sure, but I mean, bring back Porkins. Um, yes. And like pulling over like, at, at, like, Akmar, Akbar before he was an admiral, like pulling people over for speeding or something. And then, <laughs> and then they said, so this is all taking place during the Mandalorian. They said too, they're going to do a, uh, a defenders esque crossover with all these as well. Which oh my will be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is crazy. Do a better job than defenders did, please. Yes, but, please. Uh, <laughs> oh. But, uh, Dave Filoni, alone is enough to get me excited about a star wars project that man knows more about star wars than any of us ever will yep and john favreau being on there as well with all these like as a creative so you've got the brains you got the creativity i think they're a great team obviously because mandalorian is fantastic yeah print the money lando calrissian will be getting his own series of disney plus no official announcement who will play the lando who will play the role of the lando but we know that uh, Justin Simeen will be the showrunner. I mean, if Childish Gambino, you know, Donald Glover is uh, available, I'm sure they would get him because I think people would watch the show just for him alone. You know, I feel like this was so Justin Simeen's from like Dear White People or some show like that. I've never yeah. watched, but uh-huh. um, I feel like they specifically said like we don't know who's going to play Lando. Just so later on they could be like, hey guys, we got Glover back. Yeah, right. Um, so I'm just going with the assumption that we have Donny, Don Glover playing Lando. Why would you never cool. want to play? Why would you not want to play Lando? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, like it's funny because you read all the articles. Like, will it be him or will it be uh, Billy D? And I'm just like, did you not watch the last Star Wars movie? Like Billy right. D was like being rolled around and just saying lines. Right. Like I right. love Billy D. Yeah. But he's just he's not up to being the star of a TV no, show. He's not going to be the front runner of a standalone show for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, if they brought him in as like, I don't know, as like a guest character of like his father or something, you know, that would be a cool nod, but I guess no, they already, the, yeah. The best nod would be like Billy D like sitting down with a Colt 45 and a cigar and be like, let me tell you about the stories from the good old days. Oh yeah. Like, 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 intro yeah. to the show. Yeah. yeah. Now that would be great. Like a tales from the crypt with Billy D Williams. Yeah. Billy D yeah. like introducing himself. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's such a Lando thing to do. It like, is too. Have him in his like sex dungeon domain place. He sex palace. Like, Welcome to Billy's Sex Palace. Here's a story. <laughs> like, I, there's no other way to do it. Disney, write it. It writes itself. Um, Leslie Hedlund, creator of Russian Doll, which I hear is a pretty popular show, uh, will also be getting two new Star Wars series. Two. The first is a live action series called Acolyte. The second is an animated called Visions. Uh, we've we've heard that. Um, Acolyte is, well, they're both anthology-like series. There'll be sporadic stories inside the Star Wars universe, but Acolyte is going to focus on being evil, I'm assuming. We're going to get, like, bad side stories. Which could do yeah. that. Like, more Sith stories. I think that's really cool. Uh, the Visions, I don't, um, it is animated. Don't know where they're going to go with that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I mean, I'm down for both of these. My only thing here is, is if you're going to do Acolyte as, uh, like about Siths or whatever evil, yeah, please, I'm begging writers out there, you can tell a good story about evil characters that don't necessarily have to be like, oh, we're evil, we should be good now, and then end up with them going on the good side, right? Like, give me Space Hitler, give me. A guy who believes he's doing right, but is evil, right. and tell a good story because that that story just they never want to tell that story, especially yeah. in Star Wars, and it makes me mad. Well, just from the title with the like the red lightsaber cutting through the cutting through the whatever the wording, I'm hoping yeah. that's what they're going for. Um, because we all loved. <laughs> The droids, Disney announced R2-D2 and C-3PO are getting their own series entitled, uh, titled A Droid Story. So, I'm guessing these are going to be shorts. I don't know if it'll be a whole series, right? 
Yeah, that or I feel like this is a uh, a direct smack at uh, Warner Brothers for announcing Batmobile, the TV show. Yeah, be like, yeah, you got the Batmobile. We got fucking R two D two and C three PO. Um, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> like machines. People actually want to hear talk. Um, <laughs> although if you watch any Star Wars movie, they never let C three PO talk. Uh, we know that Kenobi is currently being filmed, and then they drop this uh, this big old bomb on us that. They confirmed Hayden Christensen is coming back to play Darth Vader, and also that the Kenobi series takes place five years after Revenge of the Sith. So it's going to be like so. And and let's talk about this for a second. Um, the this is five years after Revenge of the Sith. I mean, uh, Hayden Christensen is coming back. Awesome! I'm excited for that. I mean, if he's going to be Darth Vader, though, how much is going to be in a helmet? You know. Um, well. He's got a Mando that 100%. Right. You don't yeah. take the helmet off. Yeah. Uh, also, so a lot of these timelines are established. I mean, you can see it with um, Mando is five years after Re- uh, Return of the Jedi. I think, actually, I think this one is ten years after Revenge of the Sith. So, ten, five or ten. Either way, what they do is they're strategically putting these stories. They're saying they're within continuity, but they're keeping them far enough from the main stuff that's within continuity out there that it's like okay we could play in this playground and not really we got a few years to give up here where we're not going to like overlap um i interesting to me that they're telling the story of anakin and obi-wan after obi-wan like because in Reg of the sith obi-wan goes to tatooine and he's chilling like and i always assumed he's chilling till you know he gets the call in a new hope you know like I just thought he was chilling for those however many years. What is it, 30 years or yeah. 20 years? So maybe this is just my assumption, but I thought they we always knew it was taking place between 3 and 4. But I might be assuming there. Um, but with that aside, like, A, I want to say I'm conflicted about Hayden Christensen coming back. Okay. Because I think that it's been long enough where like, people don't hate him anymore. Right, and he can come back and be yeah. a part of it. But I've also watched those movies recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it's the direction he was given. You know, it is. Yeah, I understand. It's um, hard to it's hard be to make better a, in this, yeah. please, because well, it, it's hard to make a line that says "I hate sand." It's coarse, and you know, gets everywhere. It's hard to deliver a line in a in a billion dollar trilogy and make it sound okay you know like yeah i'm not hating on him i'm just saying like but the other thing too is like does it matter because if you take the helmet off i'm automatically mad like vader doesn't take the helmet off well i mean until he vader didn't take the helmet off anakin took the helmet off right to be fair so he's he's got to get to that point where he's I, I mean, I think what what this is saying, he's not full Vader yet, right? I mean, he's... this. We're going to get one last conflict that like puts him over the edge to put us at the point in New Hope where he sees him and he's like, well, I'm done trying to bring you back. We got to fight. And we had, no other, we had no other interaction besides Revenge of the Sith. I have the high ground and leaving him burning in lava. You think that would be it, you know? <laughs> like, you think that would be the last time you ever speak to the guy, but apparently not. Apparently he's... There's got to be, there's a reason that Obi-Wan's coming off the desert planet to babysit Luke and Leia, or Luke, and and say, like, okay, you know, uh, there's a reason for me to leave for a moment and pursue this guy. I'm almost wondering, because, like, so he goes to Tatooine to protect Luke and Leia. That's his whole mission. Right. And I'm almost wondering if the plot is going to be. Vader, no, because Vader doesn't know that he has kids until after Empire. Am I getting my Star Wars timeline right? So it can't be that. It, I mean, it could be that Vader just tries to hunt down Obi Wan because he knows he's still alive. Yeah, I don't know. It could, ju- it could just be something that simple. I always thought we were going to get a buddy cop series with Anakin and and Obi Wan, like. As the as he was training Anakin, but I guess there I just read something that um, Anakin or Hayden Christensen is only two years younger than 
Darth Vader was the actor that played Darth Vader in New Hope. So like he's up there, I guess. I just didn't realize. You know. Yeah, I just I got a lot of questions about this. I mean, I'm, yeah. cool. Bring him back. He needs to come back and be like he needs to be given the chance to come to to Star Wars fandom right. and be celebrated because he did take a lot of shit back in the day. Yeah. Apparently they still want nothing to do with Jar Jar Binks. There's no saving it. There's um, no saving it. But if if I'm if I'm at an investors meeting, I want to see the Darth Vader suit on the big screen or the the small screen just because that'll make the money. I mean, the yeah. toys alone, they're like I'm sure he's gonna have like oh maybe he'll have like a an evening evening wear suit that we're gonna see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to catch on there. I want evening wear Darth Vader now. <laughs> um, no, I was gonna. I mean, say- they gotta make the toys right. So what is- <laughs> Evening wear. <laughs> I was just reminded, uh, something you said. So, I've been following the extended universe since Disney took over. Yeah. And love it or hate it, they have been very strategic with their storytelling. So, like, Marvel has been giving the rights to say to do, you do a book that takes place right after A New Hope. Like, all your comics could take place in that timeline. Yep. And then, like, yeah, they did one that was, like, the, the lead to Rise and the lead to this and that. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, that was their books. And then two years ago, it switched over, and I said, now we're taking place after Empire. But, like, the books, the books would, like, take specific times and play with them, and it right. was usually outside of the movies. Yep. Or it was in between trilogies, because in between trilogies, there's giant time gaps that we know nothing about, and there's a lot of story to be told there. So it makes sense to me that, yeah, they are picking those times like in between the, the trilogies. And now even they're doing High Republic, which is like, hey, way before any of this shit went down, there was Jedi. Let's go and tell stories there. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, and we're not even done yet. Uh, we got a trailer for the upcoming Star Wars animated series, Bad Batch. Oh, so good. I didn't watch it, but you, I didn't even see me just realizing now I, I knew it was announced. I didn't even know there was a trailer because I was and then I had told you about Indiana Jones and you didn't even know about Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like there's so much stuff. So Bad Batch, it looks like it's going to take place after the events of Clone Wars. Okay. So after the events of episode three, which is awesome. Um, and they don't really show much. In terms of like actual plot lines, other than like we kind of you see a little bit with like Order sixty six and some of the other stuff, so that's what gives me the idea. It takes place in that time, but it's done the animated styles of Clone Wars. Hell yes, I like those characters from the last season that they did, mm-hmm. and I'm still hopeful that they use this show, not just to answer this question, but maybe like make it a, a one off episode. It'll be like, yeah, we saved Grogu. Here you go. Yeah. Right. But there's there's so much cool stuff to do here, and I, I'm really excited about it. It's the weird clones that decide to fight differently from everybody else. Let's do it. Um, everything was wrapped up with the announcement that uh, Mandalorian Season 3 is set to premiere December 25th, 2021. So pretty much a year away. Yeah, the surprising part there is that it's not October. Yeah. But... Mm-hmm. I, I, I said when they wanted to remember when they wanted to switch Star Wars, it was when Solo came out, right? And they said we don't want Star Wars to be a, a Christmas thing anymore. We want it to be a uh, like a March May, th- March April right. thing, right? And I never got it. I thought Star Wars on Christmas was good. Like I really right. liked going out uh, during that time and doing it. So maybe they're going to bring that back. Um, yeah, I. <sighs> I'm just I'm like wow we didn't even talk about the Marvel stuff yet. Now we have Marvel TV stuff to talk. Yeah. It's crazy. It doesn't get it's not over yet, folks. We haven't even talked about movies yet. So buckle up, buckaroos. We're still on uh, the TV talk. Still on the TV talk. Uh, the previously and then it was like, oh, you want more Samuel Jackson? Uh, the previously announced Nick Fury series has been given a name and a plot. It's like okay, well, we're, and then it was like, oh, uh, by the way, it's Secret Invasion. Confirmed uh, bringing Ben Mendelsohn back as Talos. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> I, I don't remember. Was it you like, was it Secret Empire or Secret Invasion? You said one of the two. Make something about it. Maybe was it Secret Empire? 
You said Secret Empire was a recent thing that I really liked. I love Secret Invasion too. Okay, I said um, I, either one of those. You said let's do it. Uh, I want to see it happen in like the new Marvel universe. So, but Secret Invasion is when I talked when they came out with Captain Marvel. I was like, they got to do Secret Invasion now. Yeah, but before we move it forward any further, all I got to say is Brian Michael Bendis is a very happy man because he wrote Secret Invasion. Yeah, he created like two of the characters coming up. Yep. He's a very happy man. <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, so he's. Hey. Yeah, and he's working over at DC, doing all his things over there. So good for him. Uh, this is an interesting one. <laughs> they really didn't stop at all. I mean, Don Cheadle, you know, great actor, famous actor. Coming back as War Machine, okay. It, but he's getting his own series. The series is titled Armor Wars and is said to adapt the comic by the same name. I mean, I guess, you know, do people like War Machine that much for his own series? I mean, I'm going to watch it. I, I mean, Don Cheadle's awesome, so maybe it's just like Don Cheadle alone can just, you know, carry the series. So take away Falcon and Winter Soldier. Right. I'm probably most excited about this series out of everything they've announced over the past. And why is that? Because this is a better version of Iron Man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Iron Man's an asshole. Don, uh, War Machine is way more dangerous and way better of a person. <laughs> I like I like the character War Machine. That's yep. first and foremost. Yep. Second, I like Don Cheadle. I think he's a great That's actor. It. Yeah, he's awesome. And then third, it's just like... I don't know, it's weird, but it's probably the most unique out of all of them. Yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, we're getting... Re I mean, uh, spoilers for two minutes from now, but we're getting a re-re show, but... I don't know, there's something about War Machine that's just stands out to me whenever i read a war machine comic something stands out that i really like mm -hmm. and maybe it's kind of the, the war nature of it but i really like that character and i'm really excited about that that being said it's like picking your favorite children like i'm really excited about this one but it doesn't mean the other ones i'm not excited about right and then we have iron heart which i think this is cool i mean i'm not necessarily excited about iron heart but this i think iron heart and uh you have uh, Dominique Thorne playing uh, the lead role of Riri Williams. I think that's awesome. I mean, why not? If you know, we can have Tony Stark. Why can't we have Riri Williams? And why can't we have War Machine? So I guess, I guess it all makes sense, right? Yeah, another right. Bendis creation. And I, um, yeah, right. But I like the diversity within the Iron Man universe. I guess. I it's cool. Yeah, I for myself. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Iron Heart. I'll watch the show because I didn't even know who the character was, honestly. So, yeah, I've I've seen her here and there. I, I mean, she's not my cup of tea. But I want to remember that I wasn't a big fan of Miss Marvel, and then I played the stupid video game, and, and now I think Miss Marvel's a great character. So, <laughs> changed my mind. Right. But that all being said, I'm gonna have. Uh, I, so when I went to go see Captain Marvel, I went with. About a day after my buddy Joe went, our buddy Joe, and he's he asked me what I thought, and I said it's it's an okay, it's a you know okay Marvel movie, and I'll never really want to go look it out again or anything. And he said to me, he goes, yeah, but when I left that theater, I saw a couple of little girls had to be like you know twelve or younger, yep, coming out of that all excited about that about Captain Marvel. Yeah. And even though I didn't feel like this was a great movie, I didn't care because that's who it was for. Yeah, right. It wasn't made for you. And that's what this show is yeah, for. Yeah, that's what the show is for. Exactly. So, and For and, that, I'm excited about it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the same thing goes for uh, War Machine. I mean, yeah, we had a person of color in, in the War Machine outfit and an Iron Man suit, but now, like, Don Cheadle deserves his own show. What do you think? of Like, he... I mean, they could have did more with this character, for sure. But, you know, you can only have really, in the Avengers, you could only have, like, one Iron Man guy. But um, well, I think it's I, a long time coming for him. I could have gone with this story, too. Because when I went to go see Black Panther, I went to see it with my best friend, his son. Yep. Who happened to be black. Mm -hmm. And his son came out so excited about it. And I right. remember at the time, I was like, this is a good movie. I really liked it. Yeah. But... That kid was what makes that movie great. And that right. kid is the reason that movie will last forever. Because that kid right. finally got to see somebody that looked like him up there. Yep. When you see yourself in the heroes, I mean, you really connect with these stories. And that's why comics are awesome. Because you do have... Uh, we're not going to get the whole comic skate thing. But there is diversity within comic books. 
now we're starting to see it translate to the movies now because we can get these other characters. Like it's it's not so it's not so bizarre. It's like oh, everybody accepted Iron Man. Now let's just get a couple you know uh, B side characters to Iron Man in there. It's like now it's more acceptable for everybody to see these characters on the big screen. And that's why um, I love Modok because I'm a fat yeah. man whose intelligence is superior to everybody. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. So you see yourself. In the... <laughs> oh man, you really brought it back. That's awesome. Now it all makes sense. Yeah. Now I know why you love Modok so much. <laughs> Just a talking head. Um, this was insane. I uh, we're not done yet, folks. No. Guardians of the Galaxy is getting their own holiday special in 2022. And James Gunn is running it. What? Sure. Whatever. Okay. Do it. Life Day. Let's bring it back. Oh my God. Why What's they did it best with... about this? It's in canon. Oh God, that's the best part. <laughs> um, I don't see it on here, but with the Guardians of the Galaxy thing, Baby Groot is getting his own yeah. miniseries, right? Forgot about that. Little yeah, it's shorts, like shorts. Yeah. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, um, people like that. Yeah, Star Wars did a bunch of those last year, and we watched them. They're like you know five minute shorts. There's like ten yeah. of them, so whatever. Yeah. They don't take long to watch. We watched them all, and they're a lot of fun. Uh, and then we got the first trailer for Loki coming to Disney Plus. I did not think this was the direction they were going to go with the show. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about what's going on, but it looks awesome. Like Loki gets trans so i mean immediately picks i mean we get it it starts off with the scene from infinity war and uh and then bam he's transported to i don't know what we don't even know what timeline it is right do we know what year it is I don't, i'm not even sure no but it looks like there's time cops and yeah owen wilson was there and that was kind yeah. of weird I was like, Owen oh, Wilson is a time cop? I, I, I mean, I'm not upset about it. I just didn't know this is where... Like, he's almost in, like, limbo or, like, within the time stream, almost. Yeah, and there was, like, definitely a... I don't know what we call it, but, like, a, a image of Kang above one of, like, the people. Yeah. Remember when he's walking down... Yep. And this woman sitting there looked like a judge. Yeah. And there's three heads. One of those oh. is definitely Kang. Um, and then they, they did a lot of like, I don't read a lot of Loki, so I don't know the stories per se, but yeah. I seen the imagery through uh -huh. just living in comics for so long. Yep. And I remember like the vote for Loki and that image pops up in this and like a few others. So, yep. yep. But it seems like we're going in different universes or different timelines or something. It's, it looks crazy. I hope it's just, like, Loki in different timelines. That'd be uh, great. Like, yeah. just do a different timeline every episode. And, and then they, like, shave his head and make him, like, an agent. It just looks crazy. It almost gave me, like, um, Umbrella Academy vibes. Like, that was the tone. A little bit. Especially that one sequence where he's... Yeah, when he's in the suit and he jumps He's in the, the suit plane. with a briefcase. I'm like, yeah. is he is he part of the Umbrella Academy? <laughs> Either way, I mean, it looks awesome. And then we got the Falcon and Winter Soldier second trailer and... Boy, howdy. Oh, yeah. Um, I Just don't know. Flag smashers and that. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh, that That was a crazy trailer. I mean, what do you think? I mean, you're, you're I more of a fan here. I lo so I love the... We get a really good look of Falcon's uh, suit, and I love yep. it. Yep. Um, I love kind of the cockiness of Falcon. Mm-hmm. And I also love the they give this little speech in the beginning about like you know the burden of holding the shield yep. and being Captain America and like yep. I really like that they're going down that direction of mm -hmm. Cap was always a character that is more an image than a person and more a, like a he inspires and does all these things for others and that's what makes him this great hero and I hope they keep going down that path. That being said, there's Flag Smashers, and I still have Zemo coming, and I'm happy. Yeah, right. And I want this. And I also yeah. love this. the back and forth between uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier is great. Yeah. So I'm down for that. I can't wait for this. Coming We're out. starting to get some, like, quippy banter between them, so. It's gonna this be is going to be my series of the year when it comes out. Like, it's yeah. going to be the one I'm most excited for. Um, so, now we're on to movies. Uh, I guess we'll just do this at the top. Indiana Jones 5 <laughs> is happening 
with Harrison Ford. I don't know much more than that. Uh, I mean, he's Harrison Ford's what mid seventies. I think <sighs> it's got to be. It's got to be a passing of the torch, or else the franchise is going down. And just give it to Shia LaBeouf. Like the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was. I, I okay. It is what it is. Awful movie, but. Shia LaBeouf wasn't the worst part of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I'll tell you right now. Just give me Shia, Shia LaBeouf as a new indie, and I'll be happy. That's all I want. I mean, uh, yeah, do that, and I'll never watch an indie movie again. But <laughs> well, I can't stand Shia LaBeouf. I can't stand him. But um, other than the, just do it! But I don't know. I don't want more indie. I just don't. Like, it's fine. Yeah. Leave, it, leave it what it is. Right. They're going to make it whether you want it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, but I I almost wonder if I'll even go. Like, yeah, I wonder if I'll even get off my ass to go see it. Like, Crystal care. Skull is just so bad. It's so late to have a fifth installment of Indiana Jones. Like, and it's just, it's almost like it's weird because you got the Uncharted movie coming out, which right. is a movie based on a video game based on Indiana Jones, right? Um. And then this is coming, and, like, Harrison Ford, I love Harrison Ford, but, like, like we said about uh, Lando earlier, um, like, can he get through a movie and actually do the sequences? Yeah, I don't know, that's a good question. Like, and what's really the harm in this of, like, because the big thing with Indy, what made Indy great, and what made Indy what it is, is that it was two of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Mm Mm-hmm. George Lucas and Steven Spielberg coming together to make a pulp movie from their childhood. That's right. what it was. Yeah. So if you're going to do it, why not just reboot it and start over and do something yeah. new? Or or just give me another mummy movie with Brendan Fraser because that's what I'm more Or do in. that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, Brendan Fraser can still do mummy and you should be making all just, the, those movies are amazing. <laughs> Just give me more Brendan Fraser and everything. Yeah. Underrated. Which reminds me, I gotta watch the rest of Doom Patrol. Uh, <laughs> At least two of us. Yeah. Disney uh, did announce one new Star Wars movie currently in production with Wonder Woman director Patty Jenkins. But they didn't just they didn't just announce it. They gave the most badass like like announcement to like Patty Jenkins, like out like I was getting like I thought it was like a top gun tribute or something, but she was just like rollerblading out on the uh out where the the F F one fighter jets are, telling this crazy story about how her father was a pilot, and she always was looking for a story to tell. You're like, okay, where is she going with this? Like, this is the director of Wonder Woman. Then, bam, she's suiting up in a in an orange jumpsuit. She gets the she puts the helmet on, and then she walks towards an X wing, and then it's like, bam, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Like, what? And I like I know you and I are excited about this, but again, uh, Patty Jenkins directing it has a lot of other people excited too because like Patty Jenkins is awesome. You know what I mean? Like, and Patty Jenkins knows how to do war scenes really well, right? And I think she can get those like dog fights in space, nasty looking war scenes, yeah, done well, yeah. And that's what I want this movie to be, is mm-hmm. World War II fighter pilots in yep. space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And that I said, I am a huge fan of the video games. Yeah. And I know it's not going to be like a direct adaptation of that, and I'm fine with that. But I love those games and love those characters. And I've always liked the idea of X-Wing pilots and like the squads. Mm-hmm. And I know mm-hmm. like uh, there's been a lot of... There's been that um, video game that came out a little while back. There's been a few books about them, like Alphabet Squadron and a few others. We had the yep. TIE Fire book that we kind of picked on, but I really enjoyed it too. Mm-hmm. So, And Patty Jenkins. like Patty Jenkins coming over. Just, I'm so excited. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. They took like the one good director that DC had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fine. Like- they DC stole James Gunn, so yeah, it's just retaliation. Yeah. Um, this is crazy. Fantastic Four finally coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe with uh, with Spider-Man Homecoming director John Watts. Yes. This is a big one. Like this is This is the one 
where after everything I've said about Marvel and the MCU and how they can do no wrong and blah, 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 and even their bad good, right. this is the teetering point. This is the movie that they've nobody's been able to do right. Right. Even the old Spider-Man movies, maybe you didn't enjoy them as much as the new one, right. but they weren't awful. They weren't bad, yeah. But nobody's been able to do Fantastic Four right. Nobody. I mean, Josh Trank is still in hiding. <laughs> yeah. Like, his career is done <laughs> Uh Did this, you see, I, too, uh, real quick, they actually, when they announced this, they took over the social media account for that movie uh, and rebranded really? it. Yeah. Really? Uh so they like literally just want to like wipe that off the face of the earth. Yeah, they're like, you never happened. Um, I mean, it's gonna be. I mean, this is a huge section of the Marvel universe. Opens up a lot of different things, and I I'm excited for it. This is the one thing that I love about Marvel. Uh, Marvel is I love my I love me some Kung Fu Masters, and I also love me some Fantastic Four because yeah, okay, we can say DC does it with the Outsiders, blah blah blah. Doesn't do it like Mister Fantastic. And, you know, an Invisible Woman, Human Torch, The Thing. This can be done right. It has to. Uh, yeah. And I, but this is the first time, I think, in my, that I can remember that I'm nervous. About yeah. Oh, yeah. Movie. Right. Like, yeah. I was like, ooh, you know, it wasn't like a, oh, hell yeah. It was more of like a, oh, should I be yeah. excited? You know, like. Because even like. Even if you want to go the route of X Men, because they right. fucked up a lot of X Men, I still am just like, okay, yeah, MC will do it fine. It's, right. I'm not worried about that at all. That's something about Fantastic Four. Mm-hmm. It's got to be right. Yeah, there's a. It's. I think it's hard to get the tone and what what they bring because they are they're they're a family that uh, you know family that goes beyond space and time exploration. They're almost a beacon for like that type of discovery within the marvel universe would you say i mean like people go to mr fantastic for questions about like what the hell is going on with the universe right now but also it's a family like when they're fighting and stuff it's like a team up that like this is like a feel-good moment you know what i mean so like i think it's really hard to to do that you know like how do i how do i treat time travel and universal talk but also have this family this tight-knit but then also bring in one of the best villains, Doctor Doom. Like, I think that I mean, and then and then you have like the weight of all the other characters, like Galactus, Silver Surfer, Stiltman. Um, you know those big bads that people are going to really be looking for. I love that you said Stiltman. Yeah, I know. I um, like <laughs> and there's also just the. Like, yeah, Reed's supposed to be the guy that you go to in that moment. So, like, right. in Endgame, Reed would have been the one to come up with time travel. Right, instead of Tony Stark, yes. Yeah. And, yeah. like, so it's almost like in this, they're going to have to change it a little bit where, like, now Tony's dead. You almost have to make Reed the new Tony yeah, inside which this universe. I'm fine with and yeah, but it's just it's tough balancing act. And like you said, like Ben and Johnny have to be like brothers that are just constantly right. fighting. Right, right. And Reed has to be the overworked dad who just like constantly has to be doing work and doing stuff and ignoring his love life and his family. Yeah. And there's a lot there. I I really want them to do it right because I think there's something great about a good Fantastic Four story. Mm-hmm. But it's the easiest thing to screw up. Yeah, but let's see. John Watts, he might know a little bit of something about rebooting old Marvel properties. So he's done it twice, maybe yep. thrice. This is uh, this is pretty crazy. Next Ant Man movie has been uh, has an official title: Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania. Which okay, Thanks, best crazy. title. Of- yeah, what does it mean? Who the hell knows? Uh. It's also been confirmed that Jonathan Majors will be playing Kang the Conqueror. I was right. Chris was right, everybody. <laughs> you can't fuck with time and just think that Kang's going to leave you alone, you know? Um, this is awesome. I love Ant-Man. I really want a t-shirt that says Quantumania in the yeah. Hulkamania style. Oh, yeah. 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 Please. Like, 
with uh happen. and it's gotta be oh dude and then like paul rudd dressed up as hogan quantum mania yeah let's do it um th- disney's not done folks no. disney's announced that christian bale will be playing gore the god butcher in thor love and thunder and chris is very rich um I don't know. I don't know who Gore the God Butcher is. I'm still. Re- I, I finished the first trade of Jason Aaron's Thor, but I'm sure he's going to pop up. <laughs> yeah, so he's created in that series. So you'll you'll meet him along the way. Right. Um, I really like that character. Um, I say Chris would be rich because I have it, and yep. it's worth a lot of money now. Um, <laughs> yeah, speculator. <laughs> <laughs> but. Christian Bale is that character's gonna be great because like Christian Bale is just a unique talent in today, yeah. And it's a character who's his entire world's been destroyed, and as his people were dying, he begs to the gods to save him and his people, and they ignore him. Mm-hmm. So then he devotes his life to killing every god in existence. Yeah, and then. Spoilers, he finally does it in like a future story mm-hmm. just to realize that he's the last god left. Mm-hmm. So he has to destroy himself. It's awesome. Jason Aaron's a great writer. Yeah. Gore the God Butcher is fantastic. Christian Bale's awesome. I really want to see Love and Thunder. Speaking of cashing in, Jason okay. Aaron's about to make a shitload of money off that movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's not the that's not the the biggest announcement. Here we go. Uh, Spider-Man's Spider-Man Three's cast is expanding. Uh, they have there's reports that Alfred Molina is returning to the Spider Verse to play Doc Ock. Awesome, because he was that was great he's casting. Great. Yeah, yeah, he's amazing. I, uh, yeah, so that bam, that's one. Uh, another Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire coming back to play Peter Parker. What? Okay, yeah. and then this what? is all a legend. Everybody. Yeah, but right. and, and now Charlie Cox coming to play Matt Murdock Daredevil. That's the only thing in this whole thing I care about. Right, Charlie Cox was awesome as Daredevil. Yeah. Bring him back. <laughs> yeah, what is going on with this movie? Nobody knows, man. Uh, but I will say, even if they just bring back Doc Ock, like if they cast in another Doc Ock, you know, I would be sitting there like, man, Alfred Molina was just so much better than that. <laughs> You know, like, he was Doc Ock. He was so good. Well, it makes me wonder, like, instead of doing the Sinister Six as their own thing inside the MCU, yeah. now that we're going to the multiverse, and, like, uh, Jamie Foxx is going to do a live show, yep. and Alfred uh, Molina possibly is Doc Ock, and then these ones were the biggest stretch, but I trust the reporting, that Garfield and Maguire are playing Peter Parker. What if it's like three Spider Men teaming up to face Sinister Six? And that's like the plot. Right. And where does Daredevil fit in it? I mean, what do you think? Just he's in New York and phone a friend? I almost wonder if like they bring him back for a quick sequence where like Peter has to go find a lawyer. Oh. Because remember at the yeah. end of the last movie, his his he was exposed. Yeah. And maybe it's like he go talk be like, "What can I do?" and blah blah, blah. and then it's Charlie Cox's Murdoch. Oh God, I forgot we're getting Joan Jameson back to or uh, uh, what's his name is Joan Jameson. Oh yeah. my God, I can't, I forgot about that. I forgot about the ending of Spider Man. Holy shit, dude! They're, we're they're bringing back the whole old cast, like uh, the family. The, you know, yeah, because we already got Fel- uh, not Falcon, we already got Vulture. Yep. So this could give us Doc Ock and Electro. Yep. And then they've kind of teased Scorpion. Yep. And then they did Mysterio. Yep. I don't know if you bring back Mysterio. Uh, Who am I missing from the Sinister Six? Oh, Green Goblin. Oh, Green Goblin. Oh, my God. Willem Dafoe? Or do you bring back uh, who played his son? Oh, Um, yeah. Um, I can't think of him right now, but yeah, Pineapple Express himself. That's all I'm picturing too. Yeah, I know. All I can picture, <laughs> all I can picture is uh, Pineapple Express. But either way, like, dude, if you tell that's that might be the one they're they're saving to announce is like Will Defoe back as Doc Ock. Will I think? And I think the only person that like 
maybe wouldn't want to come back to play their characters probably Willem Dafoe just because of like he seems like that guy that just does a character and is kind of like he just does yeah. so many things. And isn't his character well didn't his character die in the movies? Oh true. Yeah, James Franco and it just popped in my James head. James Franco, yeah. I mean So yeah. maybe you could bring Franco back. Or just bring Dave Franco and say that James is James died, now it's his son or something, you know, like uh there's yeah, this assuming this is all true, I the Alfred Molina one is the most concrete, like that's one hundred percent happening. Right. So I'm gonna believe that one. But assuming this is all true, Spider Man three is looking up to be quite the movie. But then I forgot Sam Raimi's directing Multiverse of Madness. That's right. I forgot about that. So too. he's just like he probably said, "Okay, I'm going to do this multiverse movie, but I'm bringing all my, all my." And you know, the one thing you know about Sam Raimi is he st- he grabs a character and he brings him along with him. Look at Evil Dead, dude. He's brought Ash Williams with him everywhere. You know. I so, think we like, talked about this when this was yeah. announced, but yeah. who is uh, Bruce Campbell going to play in the MCU? I don't know. That's that dude. That's what I'm. I don't know. Oh my god. I want him to be like the lawyer that Matt Murdock has to go up against or something. <laughs> <laughs> he just comes oh, with like a Hawaiian God. shirt on or something. Oh my yeah. God. I don't know. MCU, man. I'm, I'm so excited. This, it came out of nowhere for me. Yeah. It, so I had zero expectation. Just, just popped up. Right. Everything Star Wars and MCU. I just got so excited about it. I am blown away by what they announced mm-hmm. and I don't know, I'm just, it's gonna be a good couple of years yeah like we got a good slate of movies and tv shows coming out yeah for sure now um, they just come out right yeah now they just gotta wait for it uh let's get to the comic book news all the good news we do have some more sad depressing news um it was another comic great this year richard corbin passed away at age 80 um so, the, uh, I mean, you know, 80 is up there, but still, it's always sad to see these guys, you know, I mean, their legacy will live on through comics. Yeah, and, and uh, I haven't read much Corbin. I know people who are huge fans of his. Yeah, I, I always, I've always heard of people talking about him. I've never read any of his stuff, but. I did read, okay, yeah, I'm looking at his list right now. I read Rage More. I really like that. Mm-hmm. Um, he did a bunch of Hellboy stuff. Yeah, I'm trying to see the. It's all Hellboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. And he's but he's done stuff at Marvel and DC as well that I'm sure we've read and just can't put a uh, pin on them. But great artists, and yeah, mm-hmm. he great seems to be a comics people, comic creator. Like right. all the comic creators I know talked about him the day that he passed like how they he inspired them so yeah yep and i mean man uh hellboy one of the most iconic characters that's not within the big two you know yeah um all right so disney still out there announcing creative teams uh because now they're pretty much got DC. uh what did i say disney oh sorry i just so much disney, disney. Yeah, like, pretty much, you might as well just cancel HBO Max now, because, like, Disney <laughs> Disney blew you guys out of the water. Uh, Disney, or, D- I did it again. DC continues to announce new creative teams for the comics after the events of the Future State. Um, this is awesome. Stephanie Phillips, artist Riley Rosmo will take over Harley Quinn with a new number one. I will read this, Stephanie Phillips. I'm reading Harley Quinn. I gotta reach out to Stephanie too. We gotta get back yeah. on to talk yeah. about this. Because yeah. I'm gonna tell her I you know, I committed to five issues of Black Widow number one. Um and uh help me out and I can't think of uh the wonderful writer's name. But anyways, I'm gonna Kelly commit Thompson. Yeah, Kelly Thompson. And I am gonna commit to five issues because Black Widow wasn't a book I was gonna read, but after she I mean after I had read her um uh not not a Daredevil, um, Jessica Jones, Jessica Jones series. I read that and I was like, "Damn, this is really good." I'm going to commit to five issues. Bam, I did. I might have to commit to five issues of this just because Stephanie Phillips is awesome, and she's going up and up, man. First, it was those one shots and those anthology books, and now you're putting her on Harley Quinn. 
that's got to be one of the top three DC books, I would assume. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I remember when it was coming out, it was like at least a top five every month. Yeah. That's crazy. So, Stephanie Phillips, man. Uh, I've already committed to the future states. Yeah. Um, and if I like what I read there, I'll continue on. Yep. So that's not all the news, but we're just excited because Stephanie's awesome. Uh, Jean Luen Yang and artist Ivan Riaz will take over Batman Superman issue 16. Uh, I haven't read a lot of Yang stuff, but artist Ivan Riaz used to do um, uh, Justice League for a while. He's a great artist. Uh, he's he's one of my favorite artists at DC. He did yep. the Aquaman run with yep. uh, Jeff Johns. Yep. And he recently did Superman with Bendis. Ooh. That's nice. really good. That's maybe what he did. He did a Justice League with Jeff Johns, too, I think. Uh, he was uh, a Johns guy for a while. Because yeah. I think he also did that Forever Evil series. Yep. He yeah. did. You're right. Uh, Jeffrey Thorne, an artist, Tom Rainey, will take over the Green Lanterns with a new number one. Um, with John Stewart leading the team. Yeah, with John Stewart on the team. That's pretty cool. Mariko Tamaki, an artist, Dan Mora, will take over the Detective Comics at issue 1034. I, I'm going to look it up real quick, but okay. just to confirm that I'm right. But um, I believe that's the first time that a woman is writing a mainstay Batman title, meaning either awesome. Batman or Detective Comics in the that's, history of DC. Yeah, that's cool. Tim Sheridan, artist Rafa Sandoval, um, will take over Teen Titans with Teen Titans Academy number one. All of these creative teams, along with the ones we discussed last week, are the same teams working on the feature state books. So. DC is pretty much like okay, they're here to stay. We're starting with Future Stay, and bam, we're going to keep them on for for the series. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, it goes to what I said last week about um, shaking things up a little bit, and that seems to be what they're doing. Yep. Uh, so, but real quick during the expo, blah, blah blah, creative team. So they're doing the Future State Batman. This mm-hmm. is uh, Tomiko and yeah, uh, I forget the artist. Mariko. <laughs> and Dan Mora. Mariko Tamaki and Dan Mora. What the fuck was it? I just saw it. Oh, sorry. Continue well, on. I'm gonna DC, see if I well, DC also confirmed that James Tinian IV and uh, Jorge Jimenez are taking, are going to be the team on Batman after Future State, so James Tinian staying on for Batman, which isn't a bad thing. I've been enjoying what he's doing, so. Um, Marvel announced their first Alien comic series coming March 2021. The series is called... Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let me interrupt. Yeah, yeah. So she's the first female to write a Batman-led book mm-hmm. since 2000. And that was a book titled Gotham Knights. So she's the first woman to ever write Detective Comics. Cool. And no woman has written Batman. The, the title's awesome. Batman. But yeah, so that's a first for DC there. Very which cool. Is really cool. Um, Marvel and Us first Alien comic series called Aliens with Philip Kennedy Johnson and artist Salvador LaRocca. What a crazy team up for that book. Uh, for an Aliens book. I mean, we know they bought, they bought the property outright. They took ownership of the trademark. And then to come out with uh, Phil Kennedy Johnson and Salvador Larocca on the book, uh, I might have to check that bad boy out. I don't know. So, yeah, because Salvador Larocca is one of their Stormbreakers, right? So he's like a, a artist that they're showcasing. Yeah, and then Philip Kennedy Johnson. I mean, everybody knows him. And I think this is the chance for Philip Kennedy Johnson to break out if he yep. kills it on this book. I think this yep. is the one that leads him to the next thing. Yep, I'll be checking this one out too. Uh, Tim Seeley and artist Freddie Williams II announced a new creator-owned series over Aftershock titled The Be- The Bequest. Uh, the series is about a group of fantasy heroes that come to modern-day Chicago to hunt down stolen artifacts and weapons to bring back their world. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of uh, Freddie's art, though. Mm. He did that, if you remember the He-Man and Justice crossover. Oh, yeah, Justice, uh, yeah. And he did one of the Batman TMNT crossover books, too. He has okay. a weird style that I'm not mm-hmm. really a fan of. Um, writer, artist James Heron 
has a new series coming from Skybound slash Image titled Ultra Mega. Uh, the series is James' love letter to Kaiju in to- Tokusatsu films. So, like, you know, a lot of those, uh, a lot of those Godzilla style films. Awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm down for a kaiju book published by Image. Sure, why not? I'm on. Yeah. More of that, less of everything else. Yep. Donny Cates and artist Ian uh, Betterman are taking their series A Tomahawk to Kickstarter. Auto, yeah, Auto Mohawk. Sorry. A Tomahawk. A Tomahawk. Okay. The campaign is to make action figures of the lead character Cyber Zerker, but one of the stretch goals is pretty awesome. If the Kickstarter reaches 14 grand, Grant Morrison will write a one shot comic about the origin of Tomahawk with the art from e- Ian Benderman. Uh, awesome. So get that stretch goal. I'll let Grant Morrison write you a little origin story. Hell yeah. I think that's awesome. How, how does he, how does that happen? Like, how do you call up Grant Morrison and you're just like, hey, if my action figure Hello? Kickstarter yeah. hits this amount, will you write will a book? You He's do like, this. He's like, whatever. He's just like in between smoking or dropping acid. He's like, sure. <laughs> whatever. That means you've never read a Tomahawk, have you? No, I haven't, but I need to. You should check it out. You will yeah. love it. Yeah. The book is awesome. It's heavy. It was so it came from the heavy metal magazine. Yep. And it's heavy metal meets futuristic, like cyborgish stuff. Mm. Awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I love that book. It sounds right up my alley. And it's a real quick read too. It's like they collected it at image. Mm. And it's like one of those oversized blah blah blahs, but I think it's like less than sixty pages. Awesome. So it's quick read and it's really fun. Um all right, we'll get to what we read this week finally. <laughs> After all that. Um I just wanted to read Atlantis number two. I had to catch up on that, you know, Stephanie Phillips. Um I think you already talked about that though. Another good issue starting to understand what's happening with that character. Um, the ending was great. Yeah, the ending was great because we find out that uh, the girl, we, we found out her parents are connected to the Russians and they are developing um, basically humans with telekinetic powers and then she has telekinetic powers herself as the big reveal at the end. So, awesome. Let's, I want to see where it goes more, where, where she takes the, the story. It's very good, very captivating so far. Um Tales of the Dark Multiverse Flashpoint. This is written in art by Brian Hitch. I hadn't seen this guy in anything in a while. Um, last thing I read by him was his Justice League run. wasn't a big fan, but this is pretty good. Um, you know, the Dark Multiverse stories are a lot of fun. Uh, we know the story of Flashpoint. I'm not going to get into it, but um, Flash is at the scene where he's trying to give himself powers. You know, he's trying to get struck by lightning. Well, what happens is the reverse flash shows up and flash kills himself. Uh, so that the reverse flash is free and has powers, but the real flash dead, it dies. So there's a whole new dynamic within this universe. Um, the reverse flash wants to take over the U S in the war between the Amazons and Atlantis. He's like, I'm the strongest guy here because we know that there's no Superman in this universe. So we think, uh, Take, and Batman's like, well, it, they had the whole exchange of like, well, you know, Flash said he was the only way I could bring my son back, blah, blah, blah. And Reverse Flash is kind of like, well, you know, it sucks that I'm the only one who can do that. But the most villainous thing I could do is just not bring him back for you. And I'm just going to go do my own thing, <laughs> which is really messed up. Uh, so, you know, the Reverse Flash goes to the president of the U.S. And he pretty much takes out a whole squad, the whole army and says, like, you're listening to me now. Like, I'm in control of the U.S. Um Batman gets a hold of Cyborg and he's like, because you know Cyborg has the resistance, and he's like, hey, we need to go find this Superman guy uh, because he's the only one that could beat the Reverse Flash. They basically admit that the Speedsters are overpowered and they can't do anything about it, so they have to get Superman. Um, so they get Superman, he beats Reverse Flash, and then at the end, you know, Superman shows his humility and he doesn't want to kill Reverse Flash. So what does uh, Batman do? He pulls out a gun and shoots Superman in the head. <laughs> yeah. What a crazy issue. Um, Wonder Woman shows up with the new gods, and the reverse Flash uh, is like, oh, shit, well, now you know I'm still alive because Superman wouldn't kill him. He's like, oh, well, I'm going to do what you can't do. So he shoots Superman. He's about to shoot the Flash. Reverse Flash escapes as the new gods are coming to attack everybody. And that's kind of how it ends. He just is running through time to reverse everything, and Tempest Fugonaut comes in to be like, oh, well, this universe is screwed, I guess. 
Um, crazy story, man. Because, you know, you get Thomas Wayne Batman, it's always a good time. So, And that's true to the character, man. He yeah. man, shoots Superman in the head. I was like, holy shit. So kudos to Brian Hitch coming out of the gates and just doing something crazy with it, you know. Uh, Injustice Year Zero, number 12. This is Tom Taylor, uh, Cyan Torme on uh, the art. You know, we, we know that Superman and Lois are having a kid after talking with Dr. Midnight. Uh, um, Joker is getting this call to find the mask of the Lords of Chaos, like the amulet is, like, calling to him. Uh, the Justice League and the JSA decide, hey, maybe we should hide in this uh, this really secure place called the Fortress, of or the Hall of Justice. Um, and basically the Joker's like, oh, I know you're in the Hall of Justice, I'm going to come attack you guys, because now he has this... this um, helmet of the lord of chaos which is almost like something like uh um you know the guy with the the gold helmet who i can't dr fate or something so uh you know the story is really good dark knight death metal lost stories of the dc universe um this was a bunch of little stories the did you read this one uh not yet no okay just to give you an overview, there's a lot of stories by a lot of people. Like, we got Jeff Lemire writing some stuff. Uh, and we got um, a, the big Titans, like, overview story. is like the Titans are all assembled, but it's every Titan iteration from without throughout the DC universe. So it's really cool. We get all the squads together. There's, like, awesome splash pages. So the Titan story is the beginning and the end to this. And everything in between is, like, everybody's last night before they go to the big battle with the Batman who laughs. So we um, uh, we see Wally showing up in the t- where the Titans are and being like, we're missing someone, and then bam, Wally shows up. Um, basically, that Titan story resolves with they summon Roy Harper with the, the Black Lantern ring. So now they're like, oh, everybody's here. So Red Arrow's there. He's just a zombie Red Arrow, which is kind of messed up to see. Um, there's a Green Lantern story by Jeff Lemire. Uh, Hal goes and mourns all the dead lanterns, and he finds Sinestro. Like that's what he wants to do in his last night is go mourn all the like the dead rings and stuff. And he gives Sinestro a green ring, and he's like, "What do you say?" And he puts the, it, so Sinestro comes back as a green lantern. Awesome, that's cool. He's like, "We don't need to fight with fear now." And he's like, I, "He's like he grabs the ring and he puts it on." And that's how it's Jeff Lemire, man. It's even giving me chills just talking about it. Like, bam. <laughs> In, in a short story, he could bring back Sinestro as a Green Lantern and use the whole death metal. Like, why not? That was so cool. Um, Wonder Woman getting ready for battle. She talks with her mother. She talks with the Amazons of, like, what she needs to do. At a really good story. Um, Ollie and uh, Dinah Lance story. Um, they meet their daughter from the future or another universe. That's a really cool story. Um, and how he, like, wants to propose to uh, Dina and stuff like that. Or Dinah. And that, um, that that was pretty good. Gail Simone wrote that one. Uh, there's a great Aquaman story of, like, <clears throat> yeah, he's, like, he thinks, like, people see him selfish as wanting to save the ocean, and he sees his family and Mara, and then he finally takes off because he's, like, I think he's, um, I forget what he calls himself. Like, he's just got all that dark armor on now, but he takes it all off, and he says, like, okay, I'm going to go fight for the humans now. Um, so he realizes he needs to, like, they need my help. Um uh, Barbara and Nightwing get married in their issue. Um, that was pretty funny. Like that Batman's just like, you guys just need to stop arguing and be married for a night because they, they kind of like are trying to get the Bat family together. Like Nightwing wants to talk about how much he loves her and Batgirl just wants to be like, listen, we need to take this seriously, get the Bat family together and like fight tomorrow where it's like Batman's just like, no, you all need to chill. You guys are married. Okay. Go bang for the rest of the night or something. Um, Great Superman story by Mark Wade, dude. Mark Wade doing Superman, uh, where he 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 basically takes his last hour to help people, to inspire people, doing little things like helping clean up areas or helping car crashes, doing all these little uh, achievements to like inspire people, and then he says bye to Lois and um, his son. So great story. Um, it's kind of like you know the final hour before the battle. So uh, and some cool, really cool cats doing uh stories and art so that's, yeah i i, I want to get to it because just because of mark wade doing superman again yeah like. yeah and um and then i'll uh, you know i've i took a break from jason aaron's thor to go into american vampire so i'm on the first uh 
trait of that, and that's just really good. I mean, you've talked about it. It's uh, it's I don't know a whole lot about what's happening right now, but it's been pretty good so far. Is that over there? Yeah, that's it. And then I I, I know there was like a Christmas special. I still got to read and stuff like that. But yeah. American Vampire gets good. The first yeah. the first one's like good, but then uh, when they start getting into a lot of because they basically take every version of a vampire you know and uh, make it its own tribe. That's oh, okay. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, we're still. I can tell we're still in like the startup of things, but it, and and I didn't know Stephen King wrote some of it, so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, Avengers number thirty nine. This is the lead up to the Enter the Phoenix story arc that they're going to do, and this is basically a origin story of the prehistoric Phoenix, and um, she basically is left to left to die as a child is raised by wolves and then discovers that there's other people like her that have like that were just left to die out in this uh this weird pit and she ends up finding out that basically what they were is they were prehistoric mutants and there was like a prehistoric professor x and everything and uh when her powers finally manifest she ends up basically ruining everything and everybody Mm -hmm. around her dies Okay. And that's when the phoenix shows up, and she is about to just destroy the earth and say like, "There's nothing good about this world anymore." When her uh, the leader of the pack of wolves that saved her comes, mm-hmm. and she decides, "Well, there is something that is worth saving on this planet." Proof that dogs are the best, of course, um, without a doubt. <laughs> I love my cats, but dogs rule. Um, and then the ending was her going to. Uh, Odin, as he's trying to pick up the what becomes the Hammer of Thor, That's awesome. and telling him like there's there's something happening and we need to form a team. And this, so it's awesome. kind of the birth of Phoenix and the birth of that prehistoric Avengers. I really like that. Um, I'm actually gonna save that one for the last. Venom number thirty one really took it took place right after the King in Black issue one where Eddie was thrown off this building and it's him going through his thoughts as he's about to plummet to his death. Um, it was a really cool kind of introspective of what, who Eddie is, at least who Donnie's version of Eddie is Mm -hmm. uh, as he falls down. And at the end of the book, we don't know if he actually fell to his death or not. It kind of just, it comes to a part and he has this moment and the book ends. Because they probably want whatever that reveal is to be in King of Black. Yeah. But it was still a really good issue. Cool. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man number 54 was... It's Spidey fighting um, uh, Harry Os- Osborne, who we find out Kindred was Harry all along. That. And throughout the entire issue, Peter's going like, you, we've done this dance before. Like, you never win. Why do you keep trying? Blah, blah, blah. And Harry kind of reveals, like, no, 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 this isn't about killing you or, or winning. Like, I've given up that, and I've given up those demons. Mm-hmm. Now I want you to live in hell. Oh. And his version of hell is to not only make him face all of his sins from his past over and over again, but to help create new ones. And we learn at the end of the issue that his plan is to kill MJ. Okay. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Uh, and then Spider-Man number five. This is the J.J. Abrams book that isn't written by J.J. Abrams at all. Uh, but it was the the ending of it, this story. And I'll say these five issues are really good. Um, you could tell it's written by Henry Abrams, J.J.'s son. Right. And it really is about a kid growing up in the shadow of you know one of the greatest heroes of all time. So I, I could tell it was kind of Henry's going through his childhood of being JJ's son. Mm, okay. Uh, but I really I recommend it. I think it's a good story. Uh the ending was really satisfying. And uh it's who does the, uh, Sarah Pacelli does the art. Oh, and cool. the art's fantastic. That's cool. Um bu- 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 bu. so I also finished up Ten of Swords because I was like four issues behind and I'll say that that series was really fun. Cool. Um if I mean, if you're reading X-Men, you'll like it, but I really enjoyed it. And I say that to get to Sword, number one, which is the new X-Men book. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one's actually written by Al Ewing, and it's, uh, it's X-Men in space. Okay. And uh, we got 
basically Cable is like the main person we know on this team. It's him and Andre Brand leading Sword. And um, there's a few other like really like not even D list, like G list heroes, like Peepers mm. and Wiz Kid. <laughs> what the hell? Um and basically they've brought back the sword facility, but they um integrated it with Krokoan technology, so there's a lot of like trees and shit in there. And their task with protecting the world or Krakoa Mm-hmm. from outside threats and uh andrea brands her whole mission is to basically try to stop thanos level threats before they happen is her like goal mm. and uh they go on this mission real quick and they they tear something out of the fabric of uh space that apparently they're not supposed to because they even say like we're pretty sure we broke a lot of intergalactic laws <laughs> a lot of people are gonna be pissed oh well and we don't know what this thing is yet. We just we kind of see it, and it looks interesting. But uh, I really liked it. And I, I like Al Ewing doing space stuff in Marvel. And I've been really enjoying X-Men, so it was a good kind of crossover there. Hey, speaking of crossover, I have crossover oh. number two. Nice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I got to read that. not on purpose either. Yeah, nice. Nice segue. Uh, so, first of all, my favorite part of this whole book is on page one. Where you open the book and it's a not CNN report, mm. and it says comic book writer found dead, fourteenth comic book writer uh, to be found dead in the last three weeks. Uh, the first three being Chip Zdarsky, Scott Snyder, and Robert Kirkman, and the one that just was killed was Brian K. Vaughn. Oh uh, wow! So Donnie's <laughs> killing people apparently. Wow, that's awesome. But we get kind of so we get a hint of what the government's doing. They have these facilities where they're testing on the comic book characters. And what I like is uh, who, Jeff Shaw does these images where you can see all the characters sitting in their cells. Yeah. And he'll do one distinguishing feature so you mm-hmm. know who it is. So, like, Batman's in the background. You know it's Batman. Right. And things in the foreground. You know it's... But it's not really the thing because they're different enough. Right, right. And then there's even a sequence where they, they walk by and spawns in a, a jail cell. And once oh, again, they don't show his face, but you know it's spawn. You know it's spawn, yeah. So they're testing them to uh, figure out how to bring them back. And yeah. the government agent gives this conversation, which makes me think that he's talking with Bruce Wayne, mm-hmm. um, about how like they want to help and they want to get back to their universe just as much as we want them gone. Mm. Um. And then kind of the, the that's kind of the B story actually. The A story is back to that little girl and uh her being lost in this world and meeting these two people that own the comic book shop. Yep. And they're having a conversation like we should go to the dome that took over what was it, Denver? Yeah. And get you back in and then I can go in there too and we can figure things out. And the old man is sitting there going, like, we don't know what this little girl's capable of, like, what she is. Like, I don't want to be – they kind of get these, like, tones of, like, I don't want to be a bigot, but, like, what could she be doing? Like, we don't know what she can do. Right. And then it's revealed that she has teleconnect powers and is blowing up rats outside. Um, Okay. Nice. So there's a lot of really cool things happening here, and I think that this issue was – just as good, if not better, than the first. Nice. And, um, yeah. Everybody I, get on the crossover bandwagon. I really like that first issue. I just I just one slipped under my radar. i got to pick it up again. I didn't. So, when we do... Everybody out there, if you go to ForbesComicNews.com, you can see the books that are coming out next week on there every week. And when we do that, I go through the list. I completely blank that crossover was on there, or else it right. would have been my pick. Yep. And then when I looked in this, I go through my books at the shop. I'm like, wait, crossovers out this week? Awesome. Yeah, I know. It's like, it's one of those titles, too, where it doesn't like stand out at you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're scrolling through, you know, a Death Knight, Death Metal, Dark Knight, Death Metal like, title when you see it. And in the back of this issue, they did a little preview of that book that he's doing that connects to God Country. Oh, really? That's cool. Um, what the hell is it called? And the art's really cool, but I haven't read God Country yet, so. Uh, the one you feed. It's the one that they're doing with uh, Brian K. Vaughn over at Panel Syndicate. Uh, okay. So. Cool. That was really cool, too. Awesome. 
That's all I have, Mike. Where can people find you on that internet? They can find me at Fortress Ricker on Twitter. Where can they find you and or the show? Well, they can find me at Fortress Chris on the Twitter machine, and they can find the show at FortressComicNews.com. Um, remember, everybody, to give us these five-star reviews on the podcatcher of your choice. To like, subscribe, share, comment down below if you're watching us on YouTube. And uh, keep on keeping on. 2020 is almost over, everybody. In two weeks, we're going to have our yearly reward show. Yeah. And uh, Mike's going to give Batman a bunch of awards. Uh, I don't know about this year, man. I don't know. I don't know. But everybody tune into that, because that's going to be a lot of fun. And remember to tune in next week, because we will see you all next week. Bye-bye.